from Tim Taylor. It's uh, Sunday again. I want to share with you just before the service uh, a few thoughts. And that is, I want to talk about uh, where it says in uh, Corinthians, first the natural, then the spiritual. And what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the concept of practical preparations along with spiritual preparations. Because for the last several months, uh, we've been on a theme where God has been strongly highlighting prepare. You know, we remember the scripture that talks about prepare the way the Lord makes straight paths for our God. Well, we started off 2024 with the fast way to prepare. We began 2024 with a fast into the uh, this new year. Then we followed this up with how the Lord prepares his bride. Then we followed up with even more where God continued down, where he talked about starting an apostolic hub and hub in, uh, in Wisconsin and what he's doing with false prophets, true prophets, and how to discern that. Because that's all signs of our times and issues that are going on. Then we started looking at like a having a mindset like Noah, because Noah foresaw what was coming and he moved with godly fear and prepared an ark. And that's part of the context of what we were sharing about uh, what was going on in 2024 and, be, and actually before we've been preparing for this actually for a lot of years. And then the watchman recently cried out, are you prepared? And there's three kinds of people in their response to the attacks and how they prepare. And then we talked about preparing the way of the Lord. What I want to talk about now, actually, is I want to start with some first the natural, then the spiritual. And I thought about the way I would do that is I would pull out one of my packs again. This is one of my my bags I carry around. Sometimes it goes in a vehicle. Sometimes it goes with me personally. But I want to share with you some of the preparations we've made over the years. And I want to start with a boo-boo kit. Yeah, this came out of my bag. This is not the boo-boo kit. It's one of them. And what's in here? We got Band-Aids. We got anti-diarrheals. We got aspirin, Tylenol. We got some triple antibiotic anointment. You know, last time I shared with you about um, the tourniquets we carry. Uh, you know, we have. I happen to carry at least three uh, in my pack there. There's one. Actually, I carry more than three because I didn't realize it because I'm getting out right now my first aid kit, which is far more than a boo-boo kit. This is for major stuff. And so a few years back, Brenda and I went to a special training for an active shooter. You know, in my nation, uh, we have a Second Amendment that's supposed to allow you to go around and protect yourself. But there are some places they've ruled as uh, gun-free zones. Well, guess where the criminals want to attack like Christian schools over in Nashville, gun-free zones, and on and on I could go. Nevertheless, what would you do if, again, first the natural, then the spiritual. So over the years, Brendan and I, for example, we've exercised our faith. We've been preparing for a number of years. We know how to pray for the sick. Our first response is prayer, actually. And I could go down on a whole thing about what God does with healing. But now what I want to talk about is the time we've invested in practical skills to help us serve other people. And the purpose of this is our goal is not really to serve other people as much as it is to serve our Heavenly Father and His purpose in this generation. And the fact is, my Heavenly Father loves people. And so because of that, we have taken made an effort recognizing the signs of the times to prepare. And so part of that preparation was we actually went to a class held by a local uh, gun store and, and sh a shooting range uh, where they did a whole course on an active shooter. What could you do if, because again, it's, a, it's usually in a gun-free zone, you don't have a weapon. So what do you do? How can you respond? And so we began to look at that. And one of the things we did, we looked at first aid. And then that led to Brenda and I go ahead and taking a first aid class about how do you deal with major trauma in an event like that. That led to us uh, expanding our kit. And so in this first aid kit, I have some um, gauze here that's for uh, blood clotting. You know, we learned how to pack a wound, you know, like a gunshot wound or a knife wound or things like that. We also have another tourniquet in here. It's a different kind. It's made for a pressure bandage or a tourniquet. In addition to, I found another boo-boo kit. It's one of those things I've carried for some time. This one also has a whistle, earplugs, 
and also some uh, water purification tablets along with some band-aids and things like that. Because see, Brenda and I, we also travel overseas and that's part of the reason why we carry certain things within our boo-boo kits. But in addition to that, we also have another uh, bandage that's also made by NAR, which does not stand for the New Apostolic Reformation. It stands for Northwest uh, American um, um, Rescue. North American Rescue is what it stands for. But it's a pressure bandage. It's like an Israeli bandage that they made for a special um, uh, place in combat. We also have in here uh, more gauze for plugging wounds. And we got also, there's some trauma shears in my kit. Anyway, that's kind of one of the things that we carry to be practically prepared. But what I want to share with you now is how our Heavenly Father prepared. Check this out. So the scripture tells us, and Jesus understanding his times, understanding what they were about to go through, what he had to go through, he shares this with them. Now you can understand, prior to that, he told them, he sent them out two by two, said, don't take anything for the trip or the journey. You got to trust God for everything. But then later on, he goes back and says, it's time to prepare. He says uh, in uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 36, then he said to them, but now he who has a money bag, let him take it, and likewise a knapsack. He who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. The sword in that day was like the sidearm of today. It's a defensive weapon primarily, not offensive, but it's defensive. For I say to you that it is was uh, which is written must still be accomplished in me, for he is numbered with the transgressors, and things concerning me have an end. So he was looking at what the scripture said, pre preparing for that time. And they said, look, Lord, here are two swords. So I take note, Jesus' team already had some sidearms with him. Interesting, don't you think? Anyway, I want to submit to you that Jesus is like our Heavenly Father. Romans uh, 9.22 says this, What if God, wanting to show his wrath to make his powers known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for his destruction, that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared beforehand for glory. And even us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. He goes on to say, I will call them my people who were not my people, my, her beloved who was not my, who was not beloved. And it shall come to pass in the place where he was said to them, you are not my people. They shall be called the sons of the living God. And on and on it goes about the days and challenges that they face and all. And I want to go through here another scripture. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10 says this, For by grace you've been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I could go through all kinds of scriptures where God prepared. In fact, <clears throat> when God began creating the earth and the fall occurred, nothing surprised our Heavenly Father. But even, I can go back to even Genesis chapter 3 and begin to show you where God made provision. He began preparing a solution right away. But what I want to do is I want to highlight a scripture. I, I often pray for many people, especially in these days. Now, it's two things to understand. There is a concept in scripture called the day of the Lord that will come upon everything that is proud and lofty. It's a judgment that comes upon Babylon. And we are in the last days. We are in the end times. And I want you to hear something in that context. Psalm chapter 139, verse 14. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest places of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. That was in the mother's womb, see? And in your book, they are all written. The days function for me. 
Do you understand when God created history, when God created all time, he created the earth, he knew what was going to happen. He began making preparations. And part of his preparations was this time that we're now calling the end times, the day of the Lord's coming upon the earth. And it says, these days were fashioned for me. These days were fashioned for you. You've got to understand, yeah, these are challenging times. But the days were fashioned for your purpose, your divine purpose on earth as it is in heaven. It goes on to say, the days were fashioned for me when yet there was none of them. So before your mother's womb, before that even began, God knew you. He had a plan for you. How precious are his thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would number more than the sand. Now check this out. Verse 19. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men, for they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. They Do I not hate them, O Lord, who hate you? Do I not loathe them who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. That word perfect can also be translated mature. You see, there is a distinction that goes on. You got to understand, God loves people, but he hates the evil acts, words. They do. And there are some people who choose to willfully give themselves over to evil. Do I not hate them, O Lord, who hate you? Now, the beauty is we live in a season where we live in a time where people still have the opportunity to repent. They can change their mind. They can choose a different way. For example, Saul, who persecuted and murdered Christians and imprisoned them, the great persecutor of Christians, when Jesus, uh, uh, after Jesus went up to the cross and rose again from the dead, he also becomes one of the greatest apostles of all times, becoming a witness. And he was before one who murdered and imprisoned believers. So God is rich in mercy. And so we can only judge words and actions. We don't judge people. God judges people. But this is the context. These days were created for us. They were fashioned for us. And that context of the day of the Lord, where we, I could go into the scripture, I could go to Isaiah 2.12, Isaiah 13.6, Isaiah 13.9, Isaiah 13.11. I could go, go to Joel chapter 1, Joel chapter 2, and go to a variety of scriptures where it talks about the day of the Lord that comes upon in the last days. And this day is terrible. It's awful. It's a day of vengeance of the Lord. It's really horrible on the wicked. But for those who know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. For those who know their God, it says the voice of the Lord will be at the head of that army. There's a people that come forth like whom the world's never seen before. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 talks about a people who can hasten the day of the Lord because of what Christ does in them. So it's just like it was in Egypt. When God chose to deliver uh, Israel out of Egypt, he made one decision. It was very, very bad for Pharaoh, whose idols and gods were judgment was brought upon them because you got to understand, Pharaoh determined his own judgment because he reaped what he sowed. He murdered the children. So it is no surprise that the firstborn, he set his own judgment because of what he chose to do, what he chose to decree, what he chose to exercise. And God at the same time delivered Israel miraculously, marvelously. It's not without challenges, but I want to submit this to you. God prepared you for these days. God prepared these days for his purpose. God prepared these days for mankind. Now, there's one more thing. There is a thing called the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, and the scripture talks about how we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And you got to understand, there is um, the day of the Lord. There are these days that we live in, but these days that we live in are short. Time has an end. Eternity does not. Eternity is going to last a lot longer than the time. And my question for you is, what do you want heaven to record that you did? What do you want? How do you want heaven to record that you responded to these days that you're living in? Because there are rewards in heaven that are laid up for how we respond. And so in myself, we have chosen to prepare ahead of time to see, Father, 
How can we be a testimony for you? How can we be a witness for you? We're going to love what you love, hate what you hate. That's why we hate wicked laws and we hate wicked things. We hate things that are lies, for example. There are, seven, there are six things the Lord hates, it says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 15 through 19, and seven are an abomination. And one of those is a false witness, a lying tongue, those who sow discord among the brethren, and on and on I could go. Those who shed innocent blood. God hates that. Why? Because he understands how the world was made, and the world follows a pattern. And that pattern is a law of seed time and harvest. You will reap what you sow. And right now, I want to encourage you to prepare for these last days. Prepare to excel. The only thing is, don't be motivated by the fear of man. Don't be motivated by the fear of circumstances. I want to encourage you, be motivated by the fear of the Lord or respect for our Heavenly Father. Because that is is how we are going to make a real impact in this earth. Because that is wisdom, because you are preparing for eternity. And eternity is awesome! And I know this. I don't do what I do because of the rewards I'll get or anything like that, though I understand and know that that's what will occur. But I do this because I'm so grateful for what Christ did in my life. Truly, he saved me and delivered me. He's also made a way so I don't have to spend an eternity in hell, but I get to spend an eternity with him. And that's really what it's all about. And as I've drawn closer to him and my relationship to him, because remember that article I did last week about being prepared, referring to like the Bluetooth and pairing? Well, because I spent time in Bluetooth preparing and get to know him, I begin to learn what he loves and, and, and begin to learn what he hates and that which is opposed to him. In the process of that, I can't help but think, as I've got to know him, I begin to learn about things like health and healing. And so I remember going in 2015 on a trip to India where my interpreter, who was theologically trained, did not believe in actual healing, you know, like where it says, and those that believe shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. He, it's like, uh, theoretically, theologically, he believed that, though he had never seen it. Well, on that day, we went to three churches, and that one day ministered in three churches. And at first, he didn't believe but he was my interpreter and he saw two sets of blind eyes open. And then by the last service, I have him on video where he is testifying about what he saw that day. And there was a man he prayed for and God opened the man's eyes. The man was legally blind and we have him on the video reading out of his Bible. How awesome is that? And he's testifying about when I started the day, I didn't believe, but now I believe because we prepared ahead of time. And so as you prepare naturally, I want to then also encourage you to prepare spiritually. And part of that has to do with having being prepared like that Bluetooth connection with our Heavenly Father. We need to be prepared prepared with the Lord every single day. Know his word, know his voice. And in the process, you can see his will manifested on earth as it is in heaven. You'll find divine power made available to you for these days at this time. And you will find it'll be a wall of protection for you. You'll find it will be a wall, a, a, a source of provision for you. And that's one of the key things, because I'll tell you what, if you don't have a prepared mindset, if your mindset is, is wrought by fear, you will not not be prepared to excel in these days, but for those who know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. That's what Daniel says. So I pray the Lord bless you, keep you. I've got to get to church. So it's going to be so awesome. But anyway, the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you and give you peace. I hope this has blessed you.